Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you're watching from. Welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. We are both retired New York City police detectives with 20 years of law enforcement. If you like all things true crime related from a police perspective, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you'll get all things Duty Ron and this guy, Ed Wallace, <laughs> when we go live or upload a video. Ed, how was your Thanksgiving, you and the family? Oh, great, great, great. Uh, stuff to the gills. And um, as uh, Joey Brooklyn says, uh, loving the leftovers. I could barely zip up my jacket and button my shirt this morning. I had so much to eat. So, uh, yeah, it was a good Thanksgiving. We give thanks and praise. But we especially say thank you to all of the folks who subscribe and positively interact in the Crime Time with Duty Ron family. Uh, for those of you who are, are, are not celebrating outside the country, you know, this is a United States pretty much thing. Canada does theirs a couple of weeks before us. Um, I want to just say thank you for putting up with our holidays. We put up with yours. We love all of our foreign uh, outside the country viewers, uh, Christian Lennon, uh, and so many people from Australia. It's two o'clock in the morning there now. Uh, and there's people up watching these two guys sit and chat it up. Uh, but this is a mobile edition. We have an exciting show that Ed is going to talk to you about in a few minutes. Tonight, we have a returning guest, Dr. Murray Marks. Uh, you know, Ed Wallace worked with this guy at the, um, at the crime lab. He went down to the body farm and did the course. He, Ed's got a funny story. I don't know if he wants to get into that here about how he attended the FBI uh, training course with uh, some FBI guys as an NYPD guy. Uh, it, it's a great story. He told it to me privately. So here I am putting him on the spot. Ed, you want to talk about what we got going on tonight with the show? Sure, sure. First, I want to say hello to some of our friends from overseas. Nabal is here. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? And, uh, and who else is here? I see some Aussies are here. And thank you for attending. But yes, so what happened was... Um, so this course was specifically for the FBI's evidence response team. And I managed to get into that course. I was the first non-FBI agent to attend their course. I mean, there are separate law enforcement courses put on separately from law enforcement uh, from around the world, actually. But I got into that course. Um, it was the first course after 9-11 because the body farm had to um, shut down their operations uh, after 9-11. Um, because most of the evidence response teams were uh, busy uh, at the various 9-11 uh, attack sites, uh, Shanksville, Pentagon, obviously uh, New York City. And so um, so I get in the course and in a right away, there was a lot of questions from uh, the various FBI agents that were there. How did you get into this course? And how did you, you know, who do you know? And, you know, I wouldn't give it up. You know, I didn't tell them how I got in it. But uh, so um Anyhow, uh, once once there, we're going through the training, and Murray Marks had all the Knoxville and local um, television news crews come to do an interview and discuss about the body farm uh, while we were there. So, is this the of, doctor we're going to have on tonight with us? That's Dr. right, Murray Dr. Mark? Murray Marks. Yes, that's correct. Yes. So, um, Chris, Christine, I see your question. I'll get to it in a second. She asked, "What's the first grade detective?" But anyhow, um, so. We're there, and I, I see all the FBI agents are wearing their um, their TAN ERT evidence response team uh, BDUs. Um, so I said, "All right, I, I I brought appropriate clothing." So I wore my NY blue NYPD um, BDUs that says NYPD Crime Scene Unit on the back, and it has the detective shield and my name on the front. So as uh, Murray Marks is giving this interview to all these uh, news reporters. Um, and then he starts walking them inside of the body farm. They see uh, 
my blue NYPD BDU. And instead of focusing on the FBI agents, whose course it was, they focused on me. And that whole night, uh, all the news broadcasts had, um, you know, photos of NYPD crime scene unit uh, on their on their reports. And I took a lot of graft the next day from the FBI agents about how come they focused in on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in other words, you weaseled into an exclusive elite course mm -hmm. and uh, they weren't used to seeing NYPD in there. They were just were used to seeing FBI, right? And, and apparently I stole their glory. Um, but uh, <laughs> but anyhow, yes, uh, Christine, for a uh, first grade detective in the NYPD, there are three uh, investigative detective ranks. There's detective third grade, which is your entry level investigator. There's detective second grade. And then your highest level of uh, investigative detective is detective first grade. And at any given time, less than 200 people hold that rank um, throughout the police department. And that's the cap, pretty much that's the cap on that rank. It's a prestigious uh, designation within the detective's rank. And Ed will say this because I know he's an honest guy. There was many, many detectives who were worthy of that first grade rank that never attained it me probably being one of them uh but it, it, because there was only such a small amount of slots available it's almost like winning a duty ron pen when there's three thousand people in the chat and you get in on the on the number so again ed is a, a very smart very um dots his eyes cross his teeth kind of detective so to get selected and put in that spot is an honor so yeah. moving, moving forward moving forward you know, it's it's really something that, you know, people don't understand and it's it, it needs it's a good question. So I, I appreciate that. That came from one of our United Kingdom subscribers. So, yeah. And then uh, Joe Murray chimed in and said, Ed, don't forget about detective specialists. And that's why I prefaced it by saying investigative detective ranks, because a specialist is not an investigative rank. It's a yeah. specialist would be ESU um, would right. also be aviation, uh, canine yeah. and then others. Um, Look at, at look at this com look at this comment. Uh -huh. Patty girl says modest much duty Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patty girl. I love you too. I love you too, Patty girl. Uh, all right, so let's talk about what's uh, what's up for the lineup tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, give the uh, folks here. There's a 400 change, but uh, for the people who are going to watch the replay and that are here. Uh, what do we have to look forward to tonight? Uh, we already saw round one of Dr. Murray Marks, but mm -hmm. uh, just give the audience a little bit of what we're going to do tonight. So you know that our last um, episode that we aired, uh, I spoke about um, the findings from the autopsy. The, and specifically, um, I, I dealt with a lot of the anthropology uh, portions of it, but we promised you that after we had the cause and manner of death from the District 12 Medical Examiner's Office in Florida on Brian Landry, that we were going to bring in Dr. Murray Marks to discuss some of these issues. And even though that we did a show on it, um, no better uh, person to, to have on back is uh, Dr. Murray Marks. And he'll do a deeper dive than what I did. And then he'll, and, you know, because even after I uh, spoke about it, there were still some questions. And, you know, we're hoping to further your education in these areas and, and uh, allay some of your your questions um, and conspiracies. There you go. Um, and, and again, as we are, I mean, we, we're true to our word. I said to Dr. Murray Marks, one of the last things I said to him was, will you come back? And he said, not only will I come back, I'm honored to come back. So. Last time we wanted him was the a uh, few nights ago when Ed and I went live. We really did want him, uh, but he was not available. Again, these are very busy people. Um, and, you know, yes, uh, you know, we understand everybody's got a professional life and also a personal life. So we try to squeeze them in the best we can. So to answer the comment, no, Ed was not my boss. He just made more money than me. That's it. That's it. That's, That's all it. Ed We're still both detectives, and there's no supervisory component to the detective. In fact, nope. our ranks in detectives cause uh, quite, a, um, con quite a problem for uh, supervisors because we didn't have to take a civil service exam to become a detective. These were discretionary promotions at the discretion oh, of the police think. commissioner based upon recommendations of your supervisors. And there's also... There's also, I, I'll be honest, there's also some politics involved in a lot of this. It's uh, sometimes, it, depending 
on uh, who's getting promoted. It's more about who you know than what you know. Um, Correct. So, I have anyhow. another statement for that, but I won't say that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, because this is a good family show. Uh, right. But yeah, so tonight's show is going to be um, very educational. I almost actually coded it under education. Most of the categories that I uh, create for our um, live streams, our podcasts, whatever you want to refer to them as, is uh, news and politics. Uh, but because there is no, uh, there's no s section and category for law enforcement. Otherwise, I'd put it under law enforcement. But uh, tonight, I almost coded for um, education. And I might actually change it to that because really these uh, lives that Ed and I have morphed into because of his connections and, you know, Barbara Butcher and, and, and you know, all the folks that we come in contact with, it really is educational. Um, and I think that it would be fitting to uh, put that under that category. What do you think, Ed? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's what yeah, we're doing. Gonna... And, and, and given the feedback from the audience, the, the, they're, they're like sponges and they're sucking it right up. Right. Yeah. And I didn't think news and politics was like for me, I didn't have any choice. They're they're bunched into one category. It's news and politics. But we do cover the news. So that's why I, I go with that. Um, so what I want to encourage folks to do is tonight, uh, before we go live at 8 p.m. Eastern, I would like uh, some of you folks to go on over to dutyron.com. And what I want you to do is put some questions in the uh, suggestion box for the show tonight. So go on over to dutyron.com. Uh, no, don't do it now, but do it after this live stream is over. And if you have a question, whether it's, uh, hey, you know, Dr. Wood, how much of the skull do we need to uh, come up with a determination that uh, Brian Laundry killed himself? Do, does he need a, a full, uh, full skull intact? Is it just certain pieces? Just questions of that nature, um, referring to the skeletal uh, makeup of a decedent. So it's gonna be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have the live stream linked in the description of this live. So if you go down in the description, there's a clickable link for those of you who are lazy, which I fall into that category. There is a clickable link so I make it very easy for you to find tonight's live stream. It's in the description of this. Uh, but Ed, you know, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing uh, Dr. Murray Mark's take on what uh, the medical examiner in, um, what the anthropologist and the medical examiner's office came up with out of District 12 in Saras uh, Sarasota County. Um, you know, uh, Every, everybody knows that we're, you, you know, no two anthropologists are going to talk about the same thing, but they're always going to tell you, this is how we, this is how we do examinations in our investigations. They're meticulous. They take time. They are clear and concise. There's no gray areas. There's no, uh, we think maybe you'll never hear that on a report, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about precision, Ed? Absolutely. Uh, so again, we spoke about this the last time Murray was on. First, they got to identify what they found out there in the field. How much of it is there? How much is missing? What's there? What's missing? Then they got to establish, especially if there's scatter, if these bones are all over the place and they're not in one general area. And now if they're scattered out there, then DNA has to be taken from these bones to see if they're all one person. And that's why right. you have that, that, that time frame that it took so long to go through this process. Because if these bones are scattered everywhere in different locations of the reserve, okay, you just can't say it's that, that person by visual inspection. Okay, you'll have right. to do the DNA work. So each bone would be painstakingly have to be processed for the DNA and sent out and have that analysis performed. Uh, in this case, th that was in fact done. And then um, the skull, the skull um, may or may not have needed reconstruction um, because they were talking about a partial skull and they were talking about pieces. So um, there could have been damage from um, the bullet, uh, the, the gunshot wound uh, to the skull. And, and there could have been damage from critters to the skull. And therefore, the, the skull may have to have been reconstructed like a puzzle to put that skull back into some into its as close as is possible to its normal form to um, 
see the uh, bullet hole correctly and then make the determination of a bullet hole entrance perforating or penetrating. Um, again, perforating enters and stays in, penetrating, I'm sorry, penetrating enters yeah. and stays in, perforating enters and exits, okay? And so and we'll, we're going to discuss- I was going to correct you. I was going to correct you, but I'm a third grade detective, so I stayed quiet. No, and this is coming from the guy that says splatter. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so these are, these are parts of clear and concise. There is no gray areas. There's no guesswork. It is a precise science that they come up with. Uh, and that's why it takes such a long time for us to get answers. And it took us, I would say, just a tad bit over a month to get these results. And, you know, to get that work and to get it down right down to these big, these, these are big details. They need to be, um, you know, and, and I want to ask, too, and I don't think he'll have the answers. You know, um, it, it says at the end of that, um, that news briefing, that uh, um, press release from the, the coroner's office, it says that on the, upon, on the request of the FBI that they are not able to go into any more details. So um, that tells you and I that this investigation is still technically active. We don't know how active it is and what they're doing, but it does give us, as law enforcement professionals retired, it gives us an indication that they're not done with it. Um, and yeah. Yes. Um, th there's several things with that, right? Um, Gabby's uh, family uh, and the attorney there made a statement that the investigation is still ongoing and there's a possibility of others being charged in her disappearance. And, you know, that suggests to me they're looking at the parents. OK, um, you know, for maybe uh, hindering um, the investigation, uh, destruction of evidence or, or assisting um, with their son's uh, disappearance or whatever the case may be. I don't know, but it just su suggests that that along something along those lines. In addition, um, you know, they, they keep asking about the guns. Uh, no, we don't know whether um, the gun that was fished out of the, of the pond was associated with this or not. We don't know if the FBI um, has a gun. We don't know if that black object the mother picked up in the reserve and put in the bag was a gun. We don't know any of these things. Okay. Um, but during that public information officer um, uh, press uh, uh, interview, he didn't, didn't say there wasn't a gun when he was specifically right. asked about a gun. He just said, again, yeah. he couldn't talk about it. If, because if there was no gun, then he would have said, I, I, it would have been very easy to say, we have no gun associated with uh, this investigation. Right. And, and what he didn't realize is he let, uh, he, he let that statement out and that caused a feeding frenzy amongst mm -hmm. the conspiracy theorists and, and just people who think, uh, who are free thinkers. Like, hey, if he's not saying definitively yes or no, then that means more than likely they do have a gun. Uh, recovered. Somebody asked in the chat if one of the wildlife, like a wild boar or an alligator, we heard Paul from uh, uh, the Gator Boys, Paul Bedar, who's a specialist. He said alligators eat garbage pails. They eat rubber tennis balls. They, they eat everything. Eat pieces, of my, pieces of pipe, pieces of metal. Um, I saw his partner, Chris, um, uh, Chris Gillette, who works uh, for Paul, I saw him feeding alligators the other day and the alligator bit the stick. Like he had like a, a, like a thick, like a broom stick and just like moved them around and the alligator bit it, bit the stick. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there, anything is possible. Um, the gun may not be recovered that he used to kill himself because it's inside an alligator's belly. Uh, these are all possibilities. We're not saying that this is what it is. But if that was if that is the case and it's never recovered, it's still going to obviously leave a lot of doubt amongst our true crime community. And that and would kill as, so as a crime yeah. scene investigator, that would kill me. I'd be back out if we didn't have the gun. I'd be back out in that reserve looking for that gun. I would leave no stone unturned. I'd be sifting that soil. I'd be digging up all areas uh, where um, where, you know, because odds are that um, where the bones were. 
given the rising tides of the water there, were not exactly the location where a, a, a potential suicide was committed. Okay, right. it, it, it may it would have shifted, I would think, between the animals and the water. Those bones may have shifted, but the firearm, I don't think so much. Okay, um, right. and, and I'd be, I'd be tearing that place apart if I did not have the firearm. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It would be driving me nuts if that was my case or if I was working it. Uh, but now you look at the vast uh, open area. They do now know, obviously, they have uh, specific coordinates on where his remains were recovered. We saw that overhead shot. You and I covered it mm -hmm. extensively um, so they could, you know, really pinpoint and go and concentrate in that area. And it, it was surprising to me, and, and, and we spoke about this privately, how they shut down that crime scene within 48 hours. Uh, I was thinking to myself, and I didn't think out loud because I don't want, you know, the, the scrutinization, but <laughs> I was thinking out into myself that that thing would be shut down for a week, 10 days. Easy. Yeah. So pocket full of stones, pocket full of stones. I love that name. Why is it so important to have the gun uh, if forensics proves he shot himself? Well, it's, it's an open um portion of the investigation it, it, and and that needs to be closed to have a more thorough investigation you know you never like to leave evidence behind you never like to miss anything you know again but it does happen there are crime scenes that i've been to and despite my best efforts i could not find all the ballistics evidence yeah yeah a lot of great comments in the chat and you know Again, an investigation is not complete until you have all the pieces of the puzzle. So if some of the puzzle, some of the pieces of the puzzle are left out, like there are some folks who are still talking about, uh, and it's tragic, the two, the couple, the two girls right. who were killed in Moab. Uh, there's still people that are tying uh, Chris Laundry into their, their murders. Uh, and this gun, some folks think, and they're right in thinking it, if there's a gun recovered, that ballistics, if it doesn't match up to what was used on those two poor girls who were murdered out in the middle of the desert there, um, that could be a, a definite X off. Okay, that gun is, has nothing to do, the caliber, the make, you know, every gun has its own f fingerprint when it shoots through the barrel. That's a whole nother thing. I know you, you could probably talk on that. We're not gonna get into it here. But ballistics have their own um, uh, forensic uh, yep. footprint. So yep. coming from the rifle and stuff. Uh, the, the, um, yeah, right. From the, as the bullet goes through, come on, come on, it makes it an impression. <laughs> I'm saying it the wrong way, but that, I know that to be true. So, yeah. Safari Dream, you know. uh, we can't get the, um, the autopsy report because the FBI has locked it down. Uh, if, right. if you saw in the um, release from the medical examiner's office at the bottom, they gave a paragraph there where it states on the Florida law and this, that, and the other thing, yeah. and on, on the request of the FBI and their continuing education, we are not releasing the full details of the autopsy. Right. So I'm encouraging the folks who are here watching, close to 700 people here watching this live stream, for our 8 p.m. show with uh, forensic uh, anthropologist Dr. Murray Marks. He's the director, I believe, down at the Body Farm in Tennessee. He will be joining us. Send in your questions. Uh, again, anthropology related. He's not going to be able to answer questions about the, the make and model or the caliber of weapon that was uh, used uh, for this suicide. He's not going to be able to come up with stuff like that. But we did talk to, you know, Ed talked on the points of, um, when a gun is pointed up to a temple, it leaves, uh, you know, it leaves a impression there, right? It's almost like a little bit of a tattoo, but we don't have any flesh on this. So there's so many things we'll get into tonight uh, in depth with a forensic anthropologist. You're not going to want to miss this live stream. Ed, uh, we were so giddy and excited when we first got Dr. Murray Marks. This second time around, we really, we're really looking forward to this because he promised, like Ed said, to come back and give us his take on uh, the uh, forensic exam once they were done with it over there at District 12. I believe uh, I see uh, was a question about Pacific time. It would be 5 p.m. Pacific time, three hours difference, right? Right. Yes. So it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, this takes all the guesswork out. 
uh, I have already scheduled that live stream. You can see it on my scheduled streams. And if you look in the description of this very stream, there is a link that leads you right to the next live, which will be tonight. It's already created. Uh, Lieutenant Pete Pranzo, thank you for being here and your beautiful wife, Richella. I hope everyone did have a great Thanksgiving if you celebrated. Um, and I'm hoping that you guys will come in and throw out the really good questions to us uh, for Dr. Murray Marks. We'll take about 15 minutes or 10 minutes at the end. Um, it's not gonna be just um, members only. I never lock down my live streams to just members only when we have a really great guest. Um, but we do make it so you have to be a current subscriber. So subscribing to Crime Time with Duty Ron is free. I, I please ask if you're watching the replay or if you're new here, please consider subscribing so you can do live interactive chats. Subscribing costs nothing. The memberships to the channel members, we do a lot of great stuff where we give private members only chats. We do the questions and answer. I give away pens. We have a lot of fun on our members only live streams. Consider becoming a members only uh, a member as well. Uh, you get uh, a special badging next to your name. Joey Brooklyn right here is a member. I'll highlight him. You get that little circle there. And it shows the, um, the some of the different emojis that come with it. Uh, and we highlight a lot of our members' comments, thoughts, and suggestions. Uh, there's also a members-only Discord group, which is a place for you to go off of YouTube and have private conversations with myself. We're going to finally get Ed in that Discord group. Uh, we'll get him you know, rocking and rolling in Discord. And we'll go on there once or twice a week, Ed and I, and we'll answer questions, and it'll be great. Bren, thank you so much for becoming a channel member. It's greatly appreciated. So tonight... 8 p.m. Eastern. I can't overemphasize how exciting and important this live stream is going to be. It's going to be talking about the overview. Now, we don't have access to the records. Nobody has access to the records. But we are going to have a forensic anthropologist with a lot of experience to talk about the potentials. We'll throw questions at him. What, what do you do if you have this? What, do you, what will you do if you don't have this? So there'll be a lot of great questions asked by myself. And of course, Ed. I mean, Ed's got a working relationship with uh, Dr. Murray Marks. How long did you guys work together? Well, um, I worked with Murray at that training course. Um, but um, other than that, we've had interactions at the American Academy of Forensic Science conferences. Um, we didn't really work together in the New York area. Uh, he was not one of the forensic anthropologists that responded um, to 9-11. Uh, some oh, of my other, and, no, no, some of my other, well, he may have, but I didn't work with him if he did. Uh, some of my other forensic anthropologist friends, uh, uh, Diane France, um, Kathy Wright, um, and uh, Heather and Mike Warren and so forth. Uh, you know, there are plenty of forensic anthropologists that I worked with um, for weeks at a time here at the, in 9-11 at the landfill and, and at the medical examiner's office and so forth. Fascinating. We, fascinating we became stuff. we became great friends and we're all in the same forensic associations like the american academy of forensic science and so forth and we attended each other's lectures and uh at the conferences over the years wow outstanding uh so yeah it's a it's a wealth of information ocean angel has been a subscriber for two years thank you so much listen we appreciate everyone it's not all about the memberships the memberships are great but if, for those of you who are subscribed who uh, you know, can't send super chats or can't support financially, don't worry about that because we as a community here, we, we love all you guys. So if you subscribe, which costs nothing, and you watch our videos, you let the ads run, you let those ads play, walk away from your device and then come back five minutes from then or 30 seconds from then, you are contributing to Crime Time with Duty Ron by leaving questions and comments here in the chat. You are, um, uh, contributing to Crime Time with Duty Run. So it costs nothing to contribute and we appreciate and respect everybody. And for those of you who go that one step, and I thank you, uh, we appreciate it. It's uh, humbling, it's honor. It's an honor to bring the uh, information that we bring to you. And I feel, and I truly feel this is true. Uh, there's no other YouTube uh, channel like Crime Time with Duty Run when it comes to educational 
when it comes to the guests that we have been putting on between Barbara Butcher from the medical examiner's office in New York City, uh, Dr. Larry Dobrin, um, our friend, Dr. Murray Marks, and we can't forget our Aussie friend, right? Our Ian from down under. Ian. Ian, is it Dadu? Dadu? I, I say that wrong all the time. He's let's just call him. Butt. Let's just call him Rex. Yeah, Rex. What a great, great guy! I can't wait to get him back. I mm -hmm. mean, we we gained so many Australian subscribers just from him being on. They were like loving him, and he's so well known over there down under. So, mm -hmm. guys, we're gonna this get out of here because. I think we've been talking our, everyone's ear off. What were you going to say, Ed? This what? No, I mean, there's so many forensic disciplines. And when we get cases that involve dis different disciplines like tool marks or ballistics, um, I got my uh, community ready and waiting to jump on the show. And I'll bring the experts in those various disciplines to come on and explain everything to you. Yeah. And I say <clears throat> one night, one night in the near future, we may have a dedicated live. It's going to be like something sort of, it's just in my mind ask Ed anything, and he'll have his whole uh, suitcase open with his weapons of mass destruction course and all of his literature to talk to you guys. And no spatter. It's no splatter, right. no spatter. We want to say it right. And my crime scene experience extends beyond North America. I process crime scenes in the Caribbean. I process crime scenes in uh, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. I process crime scenes in the UK. Um, Amazing. So... I could speak about all the different aspects of how people do it all over the world. Fascinating. Well, on behalf of Ed and I, uh, I hope we see you guys tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you can't make it, always watch the replay. Leave comments down below on what you think. Go over to dutyron.com and leave us a uh, show questions for tonight. I'll be scanning that an hour before we go live. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all one word, Duty Run. And I appreciate each and every one of you here in the chat. Gerda is great to see you from South Africa. Thank you for joining. Shay is here and everybody is piling in. You guys are awesome. We just don't have the time to individually call everybody out. If Trust me, if I could, I would. And those of you who know me well know that I would do that, but we just don't have the time to do it. So um, on behalf of Ed and myself, I'd like to end the shows with God bless the world. God bless the United States of America, and God bless each and every one of us here in the chat and all victims of crime and their families across the globe. We give thanks and praise for all what we, all of you and what we have here, and we'll see you tonight, 8 p.m., right, Ed? You got it. See you guys. We're going to take it to the outro. Peace, guys. <laughs>